the last couple of weeks, we've been working on quilt top patterns relating to the seasons. Well, today I want to share tips on quilting those tops. Well, I have some of the old and I have some of the new. You know, little quilting was done in the 1700s, but by 1840, the textile industry had grown to the point that fabric was readily available to most families, and that's when quilting really became popular. But until then, it's a myth that women were sitting in their meager cabins quilting by candlelight. You know, actually, the light was so poor, most of their quilting was done in the daytime from May to November. But I do have a great old log cabin quilt. Oh, and I just want you to think about the tools those women had. For instance, this one. This is a needle case that was stitched up in 1871. Well, we know that it was done by A.L. I have no idea of her name, but she used little beads on there. Inside, she kept her precious needles and pins. Well, for this woman, her thimble was so valuable that she made a little leather box just to keep her thimble. Inside, as we go through the wool, her needles were in there, and right here is her thimble with a little indentation in that box just so she'd never lose it. Boy, I need something like that. A little pair of scissors, probably only one, not like us, with all of the tools that we have. She had her thread and she had her, her pins, coarse pins, short pins, and nothing like our pins that we use today, the tall slender ones. These are almost like nails. Now, this quilter did finish her top and then she took a needle and thread and basted together her top with a little bit of wool batting right inside and then her backing. Usually I don't get them in this condition, but this poor quilt maker just got to the basting stage to hold our three la layers together. Well, we do have wool batting, but it's quite different. It's 60, 40, this particular one, and it is actually in a polyester scrim just to hold it together. It's warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Or, you know, we can get 100% polyester or 100% cotton. We have so many choices today. Now, I'm not going to stitch based, but I'm going to pin based. I always start out with my three layers, and I'm just going to set this one right here with the backing on the bottom, the batting next, and then the quilt top right side up and I layer these with clamps. Now this table is kind of fat, but let me just show you. You take your clamp and just roll it around the edge and do it on all four sides. Stretch it out, keep it smooth. But I actually took this small one and taped the edge. You can do it either way, whatever you'd like. I put wide tape all around, made sure that it was nice and smooth, and now I just want to ready my pins. I like to put pin covers on the edges of my pins just so I can grasp onto them. Well, curved pins, unheard of in the 1840s. But you just take and put the wide part right in here. And I have a special tool that I just ground down. Let me get that lined up. Snap it in place and you just sit around, get all of your pins all covered and then take your pinning tool and just push your pin right into the fabric. When it comes back out, close it like that. Well, I'm going to put a stencil right in the middle of this. So I want to just put a couple of pins around the outside edge, and then I'm going to do some marking. Let me get that ready. This is one of my treasured finds, the peony quilt from the late 1800s. I just love the red and the green, and the quilting is fantastic. They actually quilted a hex sign into the solid square setting the blocks together. Now the hex sign is a symbol from the Pennsylvania Dutch, and it's often painted on barns. Well, it doesn't surprise me that this quilt has a hex sign on it, because the quilt is from Amish country, in Berlin, Ohio. Well, I found a template 
that a quilter possibly used around that time period. It's made of cardboard. It is that hex sign. And it's just a little bit smaller, but the quilt maker probably just took her pencil and just traced around it, and then she just connected these scallops in between, those ovals in between, and then she quilted on those lines. Well, that would be easy. Sometimes they use brown butcher paper for their stencils, too. And right here along the block, she has some straight line quilting just going straight across there. That is pretty easy to do. Now, today, we could just take a ruler and a hair marker and line it up on the line that you want to mark and then just press hard. When it's layered together, you make an indentation in your quilt. And so you could just use that to quilt on. Just so many different things that you can do. Well, I like this one. I found an old fountain mist pattern from the 1930s. You'll recognize this. But I saw the quilting suggestions. Mm, I'm going to find out how they suggested to do it. Well, they said, we suggest that these feather patterns can be stamped onto the blocks and borders by means of the stamping powder. Well, here's a stamping block, and this is the stamping powder. It's nice and blue. And boy, it gets over everything, too. Well, they said just to take this stencil, this um, feather, and sew on the lines without any thread in your needle. You could do it by machine. Well, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to give this one a try. I'm just going to place my dark blue. You'll be able to see the fabric on here. And then just make sure, kind of bang it in your box, and then you rub across there. And that stamping powder drops right into it. I love, they said, you can find it in fancy goods stores. It's just not an expression that we use today. Well, let's see what we have. Take it away carefully. Ooh, you can almost see the pattern. So maybe it wasn't quite as effective as I was hoping. I would much rather go with the tools that we have today. Let me just move this aside and show you. Thankfully, there are these stencils so that you don't have to do all that sewing on the lines, just poking little holes in there. Your holes are already there. And we have pouncing powder. This time, it's white. It's making a resurgence, but it's packaged almost identical to the old time pouncing. So I'm just going to put it right in there. I have straight lines in the center of the stencil, a circle line, and then some nice feathers. So let's just see if we can get this whole thing marked. Boy, when I start pouncing, everybody has to clear the room. Just going up and down with it and making a lot of dust. The first time I taught it in my class, the whole first row had to clear away. And then let's just check and see. Okay, pull it away. Looks pretty good. Now, you can see the straight lines going down through here. We could even just do a little bit more marking just so we get those straight lines because that's what I'm going to use on the walking foot. I see nice feathers. Now, the wonderful thing about this is that when you want to get rid of those lines, all you have to do is steam press them and they disappear. Well, I put my walking foot on, already have set at center needle position and 3.0 or if you like 3.5. I'm just going to raise my foot up a little bit higher. You always start in the center with the machine quilt. I'm going to just drop it right on the line and use needle down. Now I find the gloves really help you whenever you're doing your machine quilting because it just grips. They have these rubber tips on them. It just holds on to your fabric and moves it about. And actually, they're pretty cool, too. Sometimes your hands get too hot when you're machine quilting. Okay, I do have a lock button, which I really like for when I'm machine quilting. I'm locking in the beginning, and then once you lock, then all you have to do is just start going forward right on the line. Ooh. And then also, if you're doing such short lines like this, when you get to the bottom, again, you can lock stitch, and the great thing is, is you just cut your threads, it's cut underneath and on the top. Okay, so we can just go up and down and just do all of the, um, the pattern. I'm going to lock stitch again, 
and down towards the end. Just starts going, keep it straight. Lock stitch at the bottom. Oh, just a couple more stitches, lock stitch. And cut those threads. Now we've got this circular ring that's going around the outside. Oh, we've got a lot to do in here. Going up and down and across, but right here, there's uh, two outside circle rings, and they are pretty easy to do. You place your hands in this shape and just turn your piece around. I know it's easy because I'm just working on a little piece, but that's all you have to do. You have to start practicing on a little piece, learn this hand position, and just go around in the circle. And let me see, I'm nearly back to right where I started. I really like to collect antique quilts and study their quilting just to see what happened. The log cabin is special to me because that person didn't finish their quilting either. Don't always get my work done. Well, the outside edge is actually done with your darning foot and with a feather stitch. So I'm just gonna take off my walking foot. It's like you almost have to have three hands to get this off, but I'm just gonna unscrew it right there now, my darning foot is an open toe darning foot. This is what it looks like. So you can really see what it looks like, what the um, outline looks like. You just screw it on right like that. Now, let me drop my feed dogs. These are the feed dogs right here. I have a button that I just pushed. Now they're dropped out of place, and so the quilt can just slide all around there's the feet are not there to catch them. All right, get these gloves back on. It's like going outside in the winter, huh, when you do machine quilting. But now you have to uh, set your own speed and your own stitch length. There is not going to be any controls for you. All right, I'm ready. Slipping over, and I saw a really good mark spot that I can follow the line. Just going to drop my presser foot right there and do needle down on the line, pull it back up, catch that thread, pull it out, and hold it, hold on to it, keep it out of the way. All right, hands in a triangular position. Keep your eye on that feather. Just stitch right along there. You're gonna go right up to that curved line and then stitch back over the feather that you had there and just continue on to the next one. Go back over the feather and just keep on going around and you'll see you're gonna pick up a little bit of speed going around there. The faster you go, oh, the better you're gonna get. Well, I've got some feathers to do. I've got some straight stitching to do. I'm just gonna keep on stitching on this and then I'll show you how to do an easy miter. I finished my machine quilting and I realized what a great easy stencil this is for beginners because you can practice your straight line quilting right in the center. This is also with the walking foot and then you can just try out the darning foot with a little free motion in that scallop. Well, once I was done, I thought, oh my gosh, I could do so much more quilting. But for time's sake, all I did was just two lines around the outside edge. Now I wanna show you an easy miter where you actually bring the back around to the front and miter the corners. Now this is a time saver because you don't have to have that extra piece of fabric to do the binding. It's even less expensive, especially if you're doing all of those charity quilts. Well, what is old is new again because they were doing this technique back in 1933. You can see right here in the corner of the quilt, the backing is just brought around to the front and then it was hand stitched down around the outside edge. Well, this is just a great presentation quilt. Signature quilt. It says right here in beautiful embroidered work presented by the Sunday School class of 1933. And then over here, one of the ladies signed it. I think it's Mrs. Christine Donnell. It says Nazarene SSM. Just such a fun antique quilt. Oh my gosh. 
me and my antique quilts, but I want to just fold it out of the way so that I certainly don't cut it. Okay, the first thing that you want to do to prepare for this is just take a pair of scissors and cut your batting up to the quilt top. You trim right up to the edge. Now, then decide how wide you want to have your binding show on the front side. Let's say I want to have three-fourths of an inch show on the front side. So you double three-fourths of an inch, that would be one and a half. So I'm going to take the backing and trim that to one and a half. I'm just going to work on one corner so I can get this done quickly. Okay, one and a half there. Turn this corner around here and also trim one and a half and get rid of it. Now, I'm going to take this and press on the backing, but before I start pressing, I'm just going to give that pounce a shot of steam. Any of those markings are just going to disappear. Now, take your backing that you have and fold it in half, and basically it's just going to go right up and touch the outside edge of the quilt back. Give it a shot of steam. Okay, now fold the other corner over like that so that it's basically in half. Now, take it and open up those edges. That's good. And then we're going to pull out this handy dandy miter marker. Okay, take a corner on this and line it up with the quilt top. This is looking good. And just take a marker, follow the outside edge, and draw a diagonal line right across the end. And right here where I folded it, right here, I'm going to put a little mark there and also a little mark there. So we should be set good. Need some of those nice, long, slender quilting pins. None of those nails that the poor ladies use. Whoops, I'm spilling the whole box. I think one pin will do. I'm just going to take this, basically pull it away from the top. Okay, pin here and pin here. Just line that up, get that right through. Yes! Kind of stand that pin up there and just turn it around like that. Now this line from here to here is what my stitching line is. Perfect! I have an open toe applique foot on my machine so I can just get that in there. Keep everything folded out of the way. Just drop your needle right on that line. Gonna do a little stitching right on the line, right up to that pin mark. How about a lock stitch in place? And then cut the threads. This is gonna be a miracle. Just see how this works. Okay, I stitched right along there. Stopped at the pin, and then right along here, I'm just going to trim about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away. Trim that off, get rid of this. Now comes the magic. The drums should roll. I'm just going to bring this from the back around to the front. Ta-da! Look at that miter. You need to have a point turner. You can just poke out that little point right there. And along the curve, along that uh, folded edge, you're just going to tuck everything in and then lay it flat and you can pin right along here. This is looking good. Pin along all sides. You do all four exactly the same. Let me put one more pin right here. Perfect. Now, you can finish this by machine or by hand. Well, since I have the machine set up, I'm just going to go ahead, sew it down by machine. You can use a small zigzag stitch, or you could just go ahead and use a straight stitch along the edge. And especially if you're doing charity work, I know that a lot of people do um, some little um, quilts that they give away. It makes a lot less expensive if you can do it quickly like this and you don't have to add that extra piece of fabric. Okay, turn it around and just stitch right along there. I think I better get that pin right out of there or I'll just stitch right through it. All right, this is a good looking corner. Perfect. 
perfect miter, easy to do. Now, I'm going to go back and do some other miters and I'll show you how to stitch it by hand. I decided to show you how to hand sew just so I could show you all the cool tools I've found. Well, first of all, you need to have a needle and some thread. Well, that's not hard, but this could be the problem, getting that thread through this little eye in the needle. Well, a long time ago, they invented the needle threader. Here it is, the Witch Automatic, the original box, and the instructions. Oh my gosh, I looked all over and I couldn't find a date, but I know it's old. I've seen this red thing around for a long time. Okay, you take the eye of the needle and you drop it in this little slot, upside down. Okay, next comes the thread, and this is where the thread goes. Hold on to it and watch what happens right here. You press down and that little wire comes out. Well, it's on the thread, but the only thing is, it's not through the needle. Well, aren't we lucky that what is old is new again because we have a new needle threader. Ooh, let's hope this one works. Okay, it says needle slot right there. You drop the needle in, eye first, and it has to be an oval needle. Okay, take your thread, and it even says thread slot. Okay, I'm gonna lay it right there. Hold on to the base. Here is the, um, what you depress, okay? Push it down, and you hear this little click, and then you know that it went right through the eye. Okay, pull it up. There's the thread sticking out there. So I'm just gonna pull it through. We're doing good. Once you have your needle threaded, right here is a thread cutter. How convenient is that? Well, I know that the old timers love to run their thread through wax and take a look at these poor wax pieces. They have been used. Well, you can get all kinds of them. This is actually a newer one. Just so cute, but it's wax and it's just so your thread doesn't tangle. And even newer, is this thread conditioner. Oh my gosh, we are so lucky. We have all of these things to make it convenient. Well, the thread conditioner is good, but my all-time favorite is hand sewing wax thread. It comes like this. Oh, it's enough, enough to last your lifetime. It actually comes in a loop the whole way around, and you just hang it up right here, but down in the end, you cut it so that all of the loose ends are hanging out at the bottom. You pull out one strand at a time, a convenient length just for stitching. Well, I already started on my hand sewing. Got my hand sewing needle. I went and pinned all around. I just love the way this easy miter looks. Like to use a thimble on my finger. To do this hidden applique stitch, all you do is take your needle push it into your top about a quarter of an inch. Come out a quarter of an inch away from where you went in, catch into the binding about a quarter of an inch, and then just pull it through. Okay, move it along right where you came out, go in about a quarter of an inch, come into the binding, come out about a quarter of an inch. Oh, it is just great fun. Sit, watch TV, relax, and you can get all of your hand sewing done, really enjoy yourself. So much fun. Well, thank you for joining me. You know, I've certainly enjoyed sharing the old and the new tricks of the trades. It's so much fun. Well, may you enjoy making a quilt that will become an heirloom for your family.